Welcome to this week's episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, I'm glad to have you back this week. These are busy times of the year as we begin to move our way through September and into October. October, November, December are typically our year-end giving months. Those are typically, those last 12 weeks are typically a busy time when we want to focus in on a lot on our year-end activities. Many are having events in October, a lot in November. We used to find uh, over the years often that some of our best events happened that Friday or Saturday before Thanksgiving as people start to get in the holiday and Thanksgiving mood and they are more open and willing to give at that time. And so uh, if you have some events coming up, I do, and uh, I sure hope that those work out well for you. Well, in the same vein as year end, I'd like to jump into our question of the day and it is related to year end and it's from Ruth in Asheville, North Carolina. And Ruth asks, as we approach year end, our executive director is asking me to create an annual report, but feel like it's becoming a statistical document. Do you have any suggestions? Well, Ruth, I definitely have some suggestions for you and really have some strong opinions on, on the annual report. If you are a very large organization and have a vast audience and a lot of programs to present to that audience, you may need an annual report that includes a lot of statistics and numbers and financial statements. But I have found over the years the great majority of organizations that are either smaller, less than a million, or anywhere between a million and 10 million, really don't have a lot of information statistically to report. And what happens is they start to, those organizations, start to put together information that really is not as valid, informative, or helpful with the partner in making their decision as to how good this organization is doing and really whether they are to give or not to the organization. I believe in a good annual report should really encourage people about their past giving and encourage people about their, for their future giving, encourage them to give. As a result, I believe that it should be weighted greatly or heavily on the story portion of that. There ought to be photos, stories of individuals whose lives were changed as a result of your organization. And so it's really important to be able to get a wide variety of stories into that publication and that that should outweigh charts and graphs and statistics. Don't get me wrong, it's important to include possibly the number of people that you've reached uh, collectively over the last year. Compare that to what was reached the year before. If you're bringing wells into for fresh water into villages, how's that compare this year to last with what you've brought in? But we can overdo statistics and, and undervalue the stories. As an example, some of our key pillars are win, build, and send is what we have. And so we focus in on stories of lives that were changed and how those individuals were built up and sent out to reach others with that. And so as a result, we get stories into those areas and we have six different divisions. And so as a result, we focus our win, build, and send stories related to those six divisions. So we can give people a wide variety of stories. And the connection with a changed life is really what's going to be the difference with individuals. And so I would strongly encourage 
you to go to the mat to lower the number of statistics and increase the number of stories. I believe, Ruth, that the stories are the things, those individual connections. I've said it many times before, people give to people justified by the cause. So people really want to hear stories of lives that were changed. I've talked about focusing and the importance of focusing in on outcomes, focusing in on the results that are done as a result of people's giving. And so you want to focus in on that area as well too. So I hope, Ruth, this helped. If you are interested in hearing more stories like this and in more of these questions, Please feel free to submit questions on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. Reach out to me via email at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. Please come out to join our Facebook group, uh, Development Effectiveness Strategies, and we've got plenty of individuals asking and answering questions out there. So I hope you can join us. And of course, as always, make sure that you subscribe to this channel and click the all bell to be reminded. And as I always say, we're here to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video.